What's cooking? Nur in the house. Look at that microphone, Nur. Dude is leveling up. Someone needs to create like a time lapse. Mic uh, check one, two, one, two. Oh my God, dude. Please. We're not worthy. We're not worthy, bro. <laughs> yeah. Someone needs to create a time lapse of Nur's attendance here and show like little sound, but sound bites of him talking and how it gets like progressively better and better. Wow. Dude, you got to teach me your, your settings. Mine doesn't even sound that good. Damn, is mine even on? Yeah, it is. Watermelon's okay. here. Hey. My first watermelon this year. Why, why is it purple, Amy? I don't know which one. Oh, it's probably just purple because your, your sweater is like reflecting on it. I don't know. It looks purple. This is just the light. A camera or something. And I got a ring. An aura ring. Wow, look at you. Leveling up. So, it's a good week. Cool. Bio tracking. Awesome. Thomas in the house. What's up? Edith in the house. Adina in the house. All uh, right. No, in the car. Sorry. Adina in the car. Hashtag no excuses. Benny in the in the booth. <laughs> cool. Well, before we get into, I have like maybe a five, 10, 15 minute presentation that I want to share with you guys. I think it'd be very, very, very helpful. But before I get into that, does anyone have, I know you have, but does anyone want to share a win with the group? Something big, something small. I do. So I got my second high ticket paying client within like the past two weeks. Um, so yeah, feeling good. And, uh, I just got some questions about onboarding that I'd like to get to eventually. Amazing, bro. You see the power of a good microphone with those clients like that. It was before I got the mic actually, <laughs> but you know, like, now I'm just going to get some more. Yeah. But mentally you had the microphone already. Facts. Facts. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. You have such a nice voice too. It was a shame that like before your, the audio was just so terrible. Now the mic actually lets us enjoy the the ASMRness of your voice. Yeah, I, I didn't even notice how much it was disrupting my voice until I actually looked at the replays that you put up. I was like, "Oh, that's what I was sounding like." All right. Yeah. He wasn't. You know, I was like, he wasn't lying. <laughs> nope. Oh, well, you kept showing up too, man. So you 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 kept getting that nudge. Sometimes Where, all yeah, you guys have to do those. is just keep showing up. Like guys, for those of you who don't know, Nur spoke with me first time probably two years ago. Dude was absolutely clueless when it came to online business. Had no idea how to do anything online business wise with regarding getting high ticket clients at least. Nur, I remember Nur like, dude, do you remember speaking with me two years ago? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah you had like nothing going on really, dude. Maybe you had some posts or something, but like nothing like set up at all. Did you even have clients at yeah. the time? No, I literally just made my first two like paying clients like two, three weeks ago. I see. You had my nothing. first one was about two weeks ago. And then my second one was about like five days ago. Yeah. Once you get the first one, you can repeat the same process and get another one. And like the first one is like you're set for life. You just need to get that first one. Um, but the thing that Nur had going for him is he kept showing up. He kept showing up, he kept showing up, he kept showing up, he kept showing up, he kept showing up. And there may have been some periods where he didn't show up for a while and he would go away and then he'd come back and sign up for, you know, contemporaneurs or whatever. And then, I mean, even when you sign up for contemporaneurs, for a while where you couldn't afford it or something or you just didn't want to and you left and then you came back, right? So it's like you just kept showing up. And then now look at you, man, high ticket sales. Yeah, Persist. man. You, the, the ultimate hack is don't give up while continuously studying and learning what's working for other people. That's it. You can put those two pieces together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It's delicious every time. Don't quit and keep studying what's working for other people. So Yelena made a yeah, post the other day. Moving. Yelena made a post the other day in the school group. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. She's She posted what worked for her when she got a high ticket sale. Anytime somebody makes a sale, Find out what they did and see if you can learn something from it. 
Cool. Thanks for sharing, dude. Anyone else have something to share? A win? Big win, small win? Any win? I have a win. Yeah, Luca. Um, I got a better client for my yeah. program. Cool. Yesterday. Yeah. I'm really happy. Amazing. How did you get the beta client? Um, I I posted it in my Instagram story. And then I also texted some people on Instagram who already wanted my free ebook. But yeah, someone just texted me that they would be very happy if they could join. And now they're in. Cool. Cool. So now, now you have someone to record your course with. Yes. Sweet. We start on Tuesday. You you should uh, connect with Nur after the class and kind of think you guys are, you might be like one step behind Nur because Nur, Nur, you, got, you had your beta client a little while ago, right? Yeah, a few months ago, for yeah, sure. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. So, you, so you yeah, let, I would love to. You can let Luca know what, to what it's with like. You, Luca. Yeah, let Luca know what it's like to go from beta client to then high ticket client. For sure. Yeah, that would be cool. Sweet. Well, I'm going to get into a super brief presentation here. Um, these are what I'm going to share with you here. I don't have a title for this, but like it's literally called untitled document right now. But what I'm going to go over is five things, five aspects, five elements that I, I know for sure if you master each of these five things, You'll be extremely successful with your business. You, you can't not. So it's like, you just look at these five things, but like, okay, how am I going to get a bit better at that today? How am I going to get a bit better at that today? How am I going to get a bit better at that today? Keep improving on these five things. So the first one, I don't know if I should share my screen or not. I'm not going to share my, mm, I'm not going to share my screen yet. I'll just talk about it. Here's, here's the first one. The first one to master is your mindset. And when I say mindset, what comes to mind? Post in the chat. When I say mindset, what's like the first word that comes to mind when I say mindset? Well, when people say, you got to work on your mindset. What does that actually mean to you? I'm curious. Post in the chat or unmute. Just like the state of my mind, my headspace, and the word positive is connected to it for me. Cool. Okay. Juniper saying self-belief. I think priorities, law of attraction, either says, thoughts and feelings, how you think of what you think, growth mindset. Okay, so the, notice how like all those are completely different, like visualization and priorities and all these things. Like everyone has like a different idea of what mindset even means. So we can't just say like, oh, what kind of mindset? Because like everyone's got a different thing of what, what that means, right? Um, so mindset, I don't know the exact definition of it, but when I say you work on your mindset, a big piece of it is remembering that you are the creator of your reality. It's remembering that each of us is living in a different reality right now. And in your reality, you can make happen whatever you want to have happen. Doesn't matter how unrealistic it is. You are the creator of your reality. So to me, mindset is like remembering that you are a creator. And another big piece of mindset, especially when it comes to entrepreneurial success, is to remember that you have to feel like you're already successful now. You can't have this idea of like, oh, I'm struggling or I'm stuck on this and blah, blah, blah. blah. Like you can feel it for a little bit. Sure, feel it for a minute or two, but then move on and be like, okay, like I'm, I'm getting better now. I'm, I'm improving, I'm making progress. But if you stay stuck in this vibe of like, oh, I'm struggling and this is hard and I am not, not, don't know if I'm cut out for this and all this, like the self-doubt and all this stuff, it's like, you just have to like acknowledge that it's there and then push it aside and then adopt the identity of the person that you want to be. And so part of adopting the identity of the person you guys want to be is the identity of an entrepreneur. Now, yes or no, do entrepreneurs have a boss? Like, do they work for someone else? Yes or no? No. They, 
entrepreneurs, they, they work for themselves. The stewards is kind of probably meaning like they work for them. They're, they're, they're their own boss. Okay? Maybe if you got a wife steward, you work for her. But a test that you want to ask, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run you guys through a test right now. If you pass this test, awesome. If you fail, that's okay. At least you're going to become aware of something. Post in the chat right now the number one, if, and get ready to type number one, if this applies to you. If I offered you a job right now to work for me and my team, $120,000 a year salary right now, five days a week, eight hours a day. You work for me helping with content creation, helping with client fulfillment, helping with some of the behind the scenes stuff. None of you guys would take that job? Oh, the stoic teacher, Juniper. The stoic teacher, Juniper, Luca. Okay. So just three of you. Okay. What if I offered that same job, $200,000 a year salary, USD? Okay. Edith, a few more people. Edith, Kelly, Trevor. Okay. So this is a, this is a very interesting moment right here. For those of you who, who didn't type a one, you passed the test. You are much more likely to go on to become a highly successful entrepreneur. If you typed a one, you still have that employee mindset. You still have this notion of like, oh, it'd be nice to work for someone else. You have to get rid of that shit. You have to despise the employee mindset. You have to cut ties. You have to burn the bridges. You have to go all in on yourself. No side hustle. If you have a side hustle now, currently, sure, like deal with that, whatever, do what you got to do. But you have to, you have to deny and turn down any and all job opportunities, at least internally, so that you can really make this entrepreneur thing work. So that's the mindset test. If you're willing to take a job for somebody, you got to work on that entrepreneurial mindset. And it's scary because we've been brought up our whole lives. Society tells us, get a job. Parents tell us, get a job. Grandparents are proud of you. Oh, you got a job. I recently got a job offer at Google last year. I told my mom. She was so proud of me for getting a job offer at Google. They were offering to pay me. It was like $120,000 a year. I'm like, and she was so proud. She's like, oh my God, my son, she's telling all her friends. She's telling my grandma. My aunt called me. Ted, I'm so proud of you. My whole family was excited. I was like, you guys don't understand. I can make that in two months working for myself. What they're offering to pay me annually, I pay that in taxes. Like, why would I go work for Google? There's just, the culture is so hype on getting a job. It's wild. So if you, if you type to one, I totally understand why. It's just you groomed into being an employee, but you have to now groom yourself into being an entrepreneur. Thinking like an entrepreneur, feeling like an entrepreneur. So for those who didn't type a one, congrats, you passed the test. For those who did type a one, totally understandable. Who wouldn't want to work for me? I, I get it. But uh, don't take the job. All Everyone on my team, by the way, they all work on commission. Everyone on my team acts like an entrepreneur. Everybody on my team acts like an entrepreneur. They're all on commission. I can't even hire employees. To me, an employee, and maybe this is the... A, mental shift you guys have to have an employee is a modern day slave you're trading your dream for a paycheck it's different when you work on commission because commission the sky's the limit the sky's the limit with commission so yeah that's the first thing mindset okay cool number two the second thing to work on is your irresistible offer. And the test you want to go, the test you want to take with this one is, does it pass the biological need test? Is your offer, does it, does it cater to a biological need? The people who make the most money with their online coaching and courses have offers that cater to biological needs. Now you might see these biological needs as being like shallow or superficial. But let me ask you right now, um, Amy, if I told you right now, Amy, uh, you give me 500 bucks and I will help you look 
as beautiful and gorgeous as you could ever imagine within the next 90 days. Drop dead sexy, like, wow. Would you take me up on the offer? 500 bucks? Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> you can't not. Any, any, anyone in this Zoom would have said the same. Any dude would even say the same to a lesser extent, but still. So I, Amy just offered to give me 500 bucks. You guys just saw me almost make a sale live right in front of you. She can't say no. It, Cause it's the biological need in the same way that you're going to get thirsty tomorrow. If you don't drink water and you're going to want water in the same way that you're going to get tired tonight and you have to sleep. These are biological needs. In the same way that if you don't touch a newborn child for the first seven days of, its, of it being alive, it'll die. It's a biological need to be touched. Especially at an early age. Biological need. So, if your offer caters to one of those biological needs, it will sell. So, there's only four that you can really sell online with digital courses and coaching programs. Only four different biological needs. First one, any guesses what the first one is? I just gave it away a hint with Amy there. Beauty. It's the biological need of being attractive. That means for a lot of you guys, it, no, Stuart, not health. Health is too broad, too general. Beauty. So for a lot of, for like a, an actual course coaching program, that would mean like helping someone either build muscle or lose weight. Clear skin to a degree as well, but it's hard to get people to pay for that. But yeah, build muscle, lose weight. Beauty, being attractive. Every single one of you wants to be attractive. That's why Nur is not wearing a polka dot shirt right now. He wants to wear a blue shirt because he's like, I, he feels better in a blue shirt. That's why Amy's wearing a purple sweater because she's like, oh, I like the color purple on me. That's why Yelena goes out and buys all this fashionable clothing because she's like, oh, I like this fashion. It's beauty. That's why she wants to use Notion. That's why um, Edith is wearing that beautiful design right now. She likes that pattern. She bought it for a reason. She's like, oh, it's a beautiful pattern. Same reason Karen is wearing like the red glasses right now instead of like green glasses. She wouldn't like green glasses. <laughs> yeah. So we all care about beauty. So that's the first one. The second one is the biological need for more freedom. And freedom comes from having money in our, in our, on our planet live on a financial planet. So helping people either make money or save money. I'm setting up my uh, business in Dubai in the very near future. They do this year. So I pay 0% tax. And I'm working with a company to help me do that. I'm paying a company thousands of dollars to help me save money. So it's not just how to make money, but how can you save money? I want to pay 0% tax. If you guys want to pay 0% tax, type a zero in the chat and I'll show you exactly how to do it. It's very simple, actually. Very, very simple. Pay zero tax is freaking amazing. The only catch is that it costs maybe like five to eight grand to set up initially. But once you set it up, you pay zero tax completely legally. And it's a very new uh, opportunity. So pretty cool. Tons of entrepreneurs are doing it nowadays. In fact, if you're not doing it as an entrepreneur, it's probably because you don't know about it. Anyways, um, that's the second one is the biological need of freedom. Another biological need is the need to feel good. I.e. opposite of pain. Get out of chronic pain. If you're in chronic pain, are you feeling good? Yes or no? No, you're not feeling good if you're in chronic pain. We all have biological need to feel good. That's why when we like sleeping, you guys notice how when you go to sleep, you like roll a little bit, you like roll this side, then this side, you switch sides. You switch sides because you want to feel good constantly. Stuart just take a sip of his tea or coffee or water, whatever, because he wants to feel good. We're always trying to reach homeostasis, so we want to eliminate chronic pain. So that's the only, that's the other, that's the third one. The fourth one is the need for love and intimacy. So relationships. That's why people are so addicted to being on Tinder and online dating and that's why guys will pay money for prostitutes and stuff like that. Like but people buy Playboy magazines, they watch porn. Porn, apparently, I, I couldn't believe this when I heard this, but porn 
websites, porn websites, they make up for 50% of the bandwidth on the internet. Half of the bandwidth on the internet goes to porn websites. If that doesn't tell you that that's a freaking biological need, like I don't know what can tell you that. Like that is so blatantly obvious. So helping people in their relationships is a huge one. So that's it. Those are, those are the four. If your offer doesn't cater to one of those four, it's not going to be irresistible. Now, here's the good news. You can tie any sort of offer back to one of those four. So let's put something random in the chat that you're kind of interested in selling, and I'll show you how to tie it back to one of those four. Let's say you want to help people with, uh, yeah, pick something. Type something in the chat. Gaining muscle. Well, that's that ties back to the beauty one. That's easy. But you can even enhance it, and you can say, hey, by gaining muscle, you'll be able to attract your ideal mate so much easier because women are attracted to guys with muscle. Or so you could tie it into the relationship one. But it's already tied into the beauty one already. Or you could tie it into business. You could say, hey, by gaining muscle, your Instagram page will get way more hits. Your People watch your YouTube videos more and you make way more money. So you see how we tie it back. Yeah, starting a business, that's an easy one. Starting a business, you're going to make money, have more freedom. So that's the second piece to dial in is your irresistible offer. Ask yourself, how can I make it more irresistible? And just do that by tying it back to human need, tying it back to human need, tying it back to human need. Uh, Edith said, I'd like to offer guiding people through a cleanse. Cool. Okay, so now we ask ourselves, how can we tie that back to one of the four? And you could really pick any one of the four to tie it back to. But let's just say we're going to tie it back to relationships. Let's just say, for example, you can say, okay, if, you're, if your relationship is in turmoil right now, chances are you're not feeling very good feeling stressed, you're feeling anxious, feeling frustrated with your partner. Well, what I found is that I can create total harmony in a relationship by cleansing my inner temple. So I have this seven-day relationship cleanse where I drink this every morning, I drink this every midday, and at the end of the day, I eat this. And after seven days, I'm totally cleansed and purified, and my relationship is always super strong at the end of that seven-day cleanse. Makes me feel so good. Makes me feel so loving towards my partner. That's an example. The other one is super obvious. Is like, hey, summer's coming up. We all want a flat stomach, but we can't get a flat stomach if we're constantly bloated. So how do we solve that? We do a cleanse. We do a seven day cleanse. And we clear the bloat and we get a seven day flat tummy challenge or seven day flat tummy cleanse. Boom. Tied into beauty. So you just, as long as you're tying it to one of those four, it'll sell. It becomes irresistible until it's tied to one of those four. It's not irresistible. It's just a, it's just a thing. Yeah. The other thing too is like, um, there's going to be some fringe people. Like there's going to be a very small minority, very small minority, like maybe like five out of the 10,000 people that follow you on Instagram that hear the word cleanse and are ready to spend money right away. Because those people are already pre-sold on the idea of cleansing because they've already been educated on the benefits of cleansing and how it benefits one of those four things. But because most people are not educated on cleansing, you have to do the educating. And you have to let them know how it ties into one of those four things. And then selling the cleanse is easy. Shrinking waist. That's an obvious one. You just can be more attractive to your man or to, you know, maybe, maybe you're targeting married women. Um, maybe you're targeting single women. Like, hey, the reason you're single is because uh, you have too big of a waist. And once you shrink your waist, men find you so much more attractive instantly. And you're going to get all these whistles and texts and your ex is going to hit you up and blah, blah, blah. You know, you tie it to relationships or again, tie it to Instagram growth, whatever. But you don't really need to sell women on beauty. They're, women are already pre-sold. It's a very easy, very easy sell. 
In fact, Amy already, Amy already proved it to us. I said, Amy, 500 bucks, you want to be your most beautiful ever in 90 days. She's like, sold. I don't even need to give her a reason. Cool. So that's the second one. The third thing to master is your audience growth machine. So I'm going to paste a link in the chat right here for you guys. Highly recommend watching this training. If you don't have an audience growth machine, you're not going to have people checking out your irresistible offer. So even if you have the world's best offer, if you had a if you had an offer where it was like, hey guys, press this button right here and you'll instantly make 20 grand. That's how good the offer is. It, it, it creates a business out of thin air and makes you 20 grand. Just press the button. That's the offer. And the, and the offer is only a thousand bucks. No, the offer is only a hundred bucks. So you pay me a hundred bucks. I give you a button. You press the button. You make 20 grand. Okay, that's an amazing offer. But if nobody's seeing that offer, it's not going to sell. So you need people to see it all the time. How do you do that? You need an audience growth machine. There's only four ways to really grow your audience, all four of which are in that training I just showed you. But you want to pick one of the following, okay? Pick one of the following and master it. Number one, organic content. I recommend getting good at organic content anyway because it makes the rest of these three a lot easier. Organic content. The key with organic content, don't worry about how pretty it looks or whatever, but just focus on how can I give people an insight as soon as they find me? How can I give them an aha moment as soon as they find me? Look through all your content and cut out all the freaking fluff going forward and just get right to the point with your content. Here's an insight, bam. So um, I want you guys to, un someone, at least somebody, unmute right now and and tell me something kind of counterintuitive that I might not know that makes me go like, oh, that's cool. Something helpful. A little hack, a little tip, tip, trick. Give it to me. And if I already know it, tell the audience. Okay, I'll give you guys one. You guys use one. Okay, Amy, go. Yeah. Um, potatoes are higher on the satiety index than meat. Therefore. Therefore. Um, therefore, it's better to eat potatoes than meat. <laughs> if. If you'd like to lose weight. Thank you. So now you tied it to a benefit. Otherwise, just a random fact floating around, right? So if, hey, if you're trying to lose weight, but you're struggling, it's probably because you're overeating. And that's probably because you're always hungry. Well, how do you reduce the hunger? Well, you need to experience satiety or satiation. How do you reach your satiation point? Well, it turns out potatoes get you to that satiation point a lot faster than meat. So by cutting out meat and focusing on potatoes, you'll get full a lot quicker and get a flat stomach and lose weight a lot easier. Boom. That's a super helpful video right there. The, hands up, think that's helpful. Hell yeah, you just gave someone a huge hack that they, they most people would not know that. Very good, thank you. Who else? Who's next? Karen. Uh, I mean, this one doesn't relate to um, my course, but um, just putting out there that uh, children, um, there's a study done that children growing up on bacon have like a 60% higher risk of liver cancer. Therefore? Therefore, you want to raise your kids on fruits and vegetables. If? If you want them to be healthy, strong, and have a good longevity potential. Super helpful video, right? So what you want to do is you take that if factor, put it at the start of the video. So you say, if you want your kid to be as healthy and as strong as possible and live a long, happy life, you want to make sure that, that your kid doesn't get cancer, specifically liver cancer. How do you avoid liver cancer? Well, if you don't do what I'm about to say, would you say 60% of the kids end up with liver cancer? I don't 
know if that's the percentage worldwide, but there was a study done that showed that the risk is much higher for kids who eat processed meats like bacon. A 60% ch higher chance. Yeah. I see. Cool. So if you want your kid to be super duper healthy, then listen up. A study just came out showing that kids who eat bacon on a daily basis have a 60% higher chance of developing liver cancer as children. So if you want to avoid that altogether, cut out the bacon and instead fry up some potatoes. Peace. Done. Or, or eat fruit. Or eat some fruit. Thank you, Karen. I was just uh, piggybacking off Amy's comment. Cool. Or, yeah, fry up some pineapple. <laughs> Cool. That was helpful. Who wants to eat bacon now? Nobody. Hands up if that was helpful. Yeah, and you see how short it was? It's like that's the kind of content I'm talking about. You put that stuff out on a regular basis, people can't help but follow you. You want to shorten the time it takes someone from the time they find you to the time they receive an insight. And that's how you make organic content really good. It's very simple. Be helpful. So to grow your... Audience, you want to put out content. There's number one. That's the number one way to grow it. Super simple. The next is to run ads, either YouTube ads or Facebook ads. And again, this is all covered in that, in that training. Um, YouTube ads and Facebook ads. The cool thing about it is, especially if you're selling high ticket, you can afford to pay for ads because you're making someone have the high ticket program. So you pay Facebook some money, pay YouTube some money, they will then take your video and they will broadcast it to tens of thousands of people that you normally could not reach. So if you feel like you have a message right now and you can say it clearly and concisely and powerfully, and you know in your head, you're like, look, if I could just get this message in front of more people, it would convert. Cool. Put it to the test. Spend some money. Spend five, 10 bucks a day on it. Get it out there to thousands of people. It only takes five, 10 bucks a day. And you'll know if your message is good enough, if it actually converts. So ads are so simple. Great. They're a great way to test if your offer is irresistible or not, by the way. Because you just put it out there in front of people and see what, see what happens. The third way is to just add friends on Facebook or get a VA to do this for you. Add friends on Facebook, invite them to your group. Very simple way of getting traffic. And then uh, another way that works really, really well is similar to ads, but instead of paying Facebook or YouTube, you talk to influencers and you find influencers who have your perfect customer in their audience. So let's say Yelena's helping people with user generated content. She would go to a, let's say a fashion Instagrammer who has a bunch of fashionistas in their uh, audience. And she says, Hey, can I pay you 500 bucks to promote this post and promote this landing page for me? It's a free giveaway. So Lena pays that chick 500 bucks that chick posts Lena's giveaway. Lena gets all these leads that have been personally recommended by that Instagrammer. Great way to leverage other people's audiences. Cool. So that's that. That's the organic growth machine. Other piece to master in your business, the fourth piece, this is your automated profit process. And my favorite way of doing this, I'll share a link. My favorite way of doing this looks something like the following. So you guys open that up. And that shows, I should share my screen. Um, yeah, so this is, Yelena just made a post the other day showing how she used something very similar to make her high ticket sale. Um, as I'm speaking right now, I'll share my screen. As I'm speaking, my team member just hit us up. We just made an $8,000 sale as we speak using this. I just got that message like 30 seconds ago. So eight grand was just generated using this method. We post on social media. 
We give something away for free. To get the free thing, they typically have to click the link in my bio or link in description, but they get the free thing. They then get on an email sequence. They sometimes watch a webinar and then they get on a strategy call with us or they get on the email sequence to join our free community. We send them a DM, get them on a discovery call, get them on a strategy call. Boom. This method I don't really use. This is like more so for beginners who are trying to make a little bit of cash. Pretty easy, like little little bits of cash coming. It works well, but I don't use that method personally. Mine looks more like this, but this works too. But it's so freaking simple. I can't, I, and what I what I highly recommend you guys do, by the way, is make a copy of this, make your own version, add your own colors, whatever. This used to be purple. I told you, Lena, like, Lena, we can't do purple. I can't look at purple all the time. So it needs to be something that you can look at. Green and blue, I can look at, no problem. If it was a bit darker, like Nura's shirt, I'd prefer that, actually. So maybe we change that. There we go. Look much better that looks. Thank you. So make it your own. Customize this. Change the shapes if you want, but make it your own. And then go in there and link up everything so that it links directly to your scripts or it links directly to your Instagram, links directly to your YouTube, links directly to your freebie opt-in. This thing should all be customized for you. Now, if you're wondering, Ted, how did, I, how did, I, how did you arrive at this flow? I used to, and I still do to a degree, Every single night when I go to bed, I take out a piece of paper and I would draw out the perfect customer journey. I'm like, how am I going to get someone who doesn't know who I am to find me on the internet and give me money? That was my whole obsession for like three years. How do I do it? How do I do it? I had no idea. I was studying all these random different people and watching these different YouTube videos. Uh, I bought into a bunch of courses, but I always tried to like simplify it and make it like really, 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 really simple for me. So what I eventually concluded at is that this right here is the simplest, most effective way to get someone who doesn't know who you are to end up giving you money. They find you on social media. They get something free from you. They join your free community. You send them a DM. Get on a quick call with them. You close them. Any questions about this process? This is like the fourth thing that you really need to master is your sales process, your automated profit process. I call it automated profit process because a lot of it should just take happen behind the scenes. I got a question, Ed. Yeah. So I just built the funnel with the low, low ticket two or two upsells, sorry. Yeah. And just hearing you say that and just based on you know, my kind of intuitive feeling feels like it might be better to, instead of going right to an upsell, just going right to like community. what you're suggesting now. The community? Yeah. Yeah. I've just made, uh, yesterday or two days ago, I made an up upgrade to this flow. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, is it on system? I'll show you this upgrade. You, you might want to use it. So I think it was here. So someone opts into the free page and then to get the free thing. And then on the uh, thank you page, say something like this. Like, hey, your thing has been sent to you. It'll be there in 10 minutes. But if you'd rather not wait, get it instantly inside the community along with free access to other trainings. Right? Now they're like, okay, well, I don't want to wait. So I'd be silly not to join. Yeah. I'll paste this in the chat for you. You can copy paste it. That wording right there, dude, such a game changer. Cause it used to say something like, cool. It'll be in your inbox in a couple of minutes. And if you want, you can join this community. But now it's like, Hey, you're going to get it. It'll be there in 10 minutes, but if you don't want to wait, get it here right away. Strike while the iron's hot. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as they join your community, they get the auto DM from you. Right? Plugins. Bam. 
Follow the DM framework. Game on. It's killer. It works so well. Do you see a difference between what you're doing now with school and the free then versus Facebook? Because I'm still on Facebook group. Well, school's got the auto DM feature, which is like guaranteed they're going to get a DM from us any time of day they join, which is amazing. Um, and then it also feels more exclusive and more valuable because it's off of Facebook. Facebook just feels cheap and noisy and distracting. School feels premium. Plus, school allows you to email all your members. Like, do you guys get school emails from me? Yeah, Facebook, you can't do that. Like, when I make posts on, like, I did, I watch this. I made a, dude, this, this should answer your question right here. Watch this. I made a post on school recently. Um, and I also made the same post on Facebook. School versus Facebook, the same post. So I made this post on Facebook. 20 hours in, it got five comments. One like. School, I made the post. Seven hours in, it got 60 comments, seven likes. So you tell me <laughs> which is better. Like Facebook's good to like start off and get stuff set up. But when you're ready to optimize the next step of school. I'm a huge fan of setting stuff up super rugged just to get like it all like to get the base layer of everything done and then optimize, 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 optimize. So Facebook is one of those things where it's like, let's just get something going. It's the Facebook group, at least get that going. Once that's in momentum, once we like take a deep breath, okay, now how do we optimize? Then you can throw school on and all this other stuff. But yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah, no, that, that helps. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions about the sales process that I showed you guys? Make these links blue. I mean, white. Hey. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, the final piece, I can share my document now, is your piece of clarity. I cannot tell you how important these are. The difference between where you're at now and you making 10K a month is your level of clarity on these P's. Right now, there's like 27 or 28 of them. It's, it's, these are so key. In fact, I'm changing this right now to powers. What are your superpowers? You have to go through these on a, on a regular basis, at least initially, and just get really clear on them. This is the Bible. This is the Bible. And anytime I work with a client, I'm working privately right now with a couple clients, something I've never done before. I just thought I'd try it out. And I'm going through these P's with them one at a time. And I, I'm like, no wonder you're struggling. You can't even, you don't even have photos. No wonder you're struggling. You don't even have proof. No wonder you're struggling. You don't have any freebies. No wonder you're struggling. You don't even have a clear, clear, uh, clearly laid out sales process. Like Yelena made 1500 bucks the other day using a clearly laid out sales process. Yelena, yes or no? Could you have done this without this sales process? No. No, if you did, it would have been so random. Yeah. This was not I'm random. Way, way more work. This was calculated. She's it a was literally automated yeah so it's like she's gonna post on social media someone's gonna get the freebie they're gonna <laughs> join the community they're gonna get nurtured they're gonna get a call they're gonna get closed it's all calculated works it works it works but again it's because lena put in the work on getting clear on one of her p's whether she knew it or not which is the sales process Yeah. And I honestly, um, I had, I had another Facebook group 
for like the same target audience and I, I, it's been up for months and there was I mean I technically didn't have this high ticket offer but no one was interested in like one-on-one -on -one help but as soon as I launched this school group boom boom the first call and was that's the that's one of the P's it's platforms Right. And so it's like, if you're unclear on any of these 27 things, you will feel it in your bank account. Nobody comes to me crystal clear on all 27 P's and their bank account doesn't look that good. There's a direct correlation between how clear someone can be on these P's and how high their bank account is. So I cannot stress this enough. Get clear on your P's. I'm hosting a retreat in a month or so. And when people come to the retreat, we are working on their P's. Every day we're going to sit down and we're going to dive into the P's. And this is crazy because like these are basically 27 questions, right? And if, if I sit down and ask you a question about your business and you can't answer the question, you have a problem. You have a, it's your business. How do you not have the answer to that? It's because you haven't gone through the 27 piece. But you need to know that stuff inside and out. It's your freaking business. So take the ultimate self-awareness exam and go through the 27 piece and uh, get very, very, very clear on every aspect of your business. Know it inside and out. Cool. That was my... 15 minute presentation wrapped up in 45 minutes for you. Uh, before we end the call, happy to do Q and A and happy to, before we do Q and A even, I want to know what your biggest aha insight key takeaway was or one of them. Um, I just realized that also getting clear on all of those P's will make it so much easier to create content and like your content will be clear because if the content is confusing for you, whatever you put out is going to be confusing for the audience. Yeah. And then they're just not going to go to the next step in the sales flow. Yeah, that's one of the piece is uh, getting clear on on your content. Boom. I posted the doc in there for you guys and gals. Uh, Amy's takeaway, I need to check out the P's. Juniper, mindset with clarity and 27, well, um, 27 priorities, you call them. That's interesting. I never considered them priorities. Maybe that's what they're. Maybe that's what the P stands for. <laughs> the P never stood for anything, but uh, now they stand for priorities, I guess. There you go. Are you clear on your twenty-seven priorities? <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, happy to take questions. Uh, Karen, even though I feel like I've gone over and practicing the P's, it's always important to go back and review. Yeah. Especially initially, especially initially. Yeah. The other cool thing about school, by the way, is it allows you to educate and therefore indoctrinate your people. So if you guys go through all my training, you will start to see the world the way I see it, right? And when you see the way that we can see the world the way I see it, it's going to be so like, let's take my free group, for example. Let's pretend you guys are all in my free group, which you guys are all in my paid group. Let's pretend you're all in my free group and you're not paying me any, any money right now. And you're getting to know me. You go through my classroom. As you go through this, you're like, oh, wow, Ted knows his shit. He seems to be solving problems before I even know that I have the problem. And I'm starting to see the world through his eyes. 
Well, when you start to see the world through my eyes, then when I tell you about how awesome Contentpreneurs is, you're going to see it through my eyes. And you're like, wow, that is amazing. I need to sign up for Contentpreneurs. Because you're seeing it how I see it now. Then when I tell you about business in a weekend, which is a done for you service, you're going to be like, oh, wow, like I need to do business in a weekend because that's freaking amazing. But you're only going to see it like that if you see the world through my eyes. And the only way you're going to see the world through my eyes is if I train and educate you and indoctrinate you into thinking the way I think. So you can't do that on Facebook group very well at all. Nobody goes on Facebook to watch videos. In fact, every time I post a video on Facebook, it gets hardly any views. And if some people, if people aren't watching your videos, then they're not being indoctrinated. They're not being educated. They're not being transformed. So you want a platform where people can actually watch and consume your, your video content. Uh, Thomas, if you want to get set up on school, man, just shoot me a message. I can hop on privately one-on-one -on -one with you and set up your school group with you. No, my problem is I, uh, I set up a, a paid school group first. Oh, okay. So, because I already had, <clears throat> excuse me, I already had paying customers for a membership previously. So that was simple switch, right? Yeah. But, you know, now I'm thinking about it. It's like maybe the free should have been first step, get that situated. No, I probably would have gone paid too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, uh, are these people paying you monthly or one time or what? Yeah, no, it's a monthly subscription. Yeah. Perfect. I would have put them in there. I, in fact, I did. I did the exact same thing. I went from paid Facebook group to school. And then on, only recently, I created a free school account or free school group. I, yeah, I wanted to nurture my paying people first. If I'm going to make a big upgrade in my business, I want to help you guys out first. Not the free people. They can wait. So, yeah. No, you, it's fine. The, the order you did it is, is why I did it. But yeah, school group's next, I think, for you. Yeah, and how soon? I mean, I just changed the title and subject matter of my my Facebook group. If you remember, yeah. So I have whatever eight hundred, nine hundred people in there. How quick? I mean, should I just do that? Should I just move it over to school, or it's should a, I it, wait, it should be, nurture it should that a, audience a little bit? Yeah, it's a slow process, dude. Like we announced that we're closing down our Facebook group a while ago, like months ago, and we're slowly phasing it out. So what is this? December. I announced it. What is it now? It's like almost June. But I need to make sure everyone knows we're closing it down and everyone in here we're messaging saying, go to school, 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 school, go to school. And what we're doing is we're posting stuff on a regular basis still, but we're every time we give someone something, we say, hey, this thing we're giving you, it actually lives in school. So go to school and get it. Mm -hmm. So... You want this thing? Comment. You want this thing? Comment. You want this thing? Comment. And then we, where does this course live? School. Where do these interviews live? School. Right? So we still, we're still like using it as a um, way to get people over, but we'll, we'll phase it out. There's, there's no point in having it eventually. So take your time with it, but make this post now. And then that'll buy you a few months. Mm. Karen, I have my paid membership and lots of classes and weekly talks. How can I make the time for also creating classes in a free school group? Most of my classes in a free school group, I've just done live. Like I take my, if you said you're doing classes and weekly talks, cool make those a theme and turn them into course material. So some of you guys may or may not remember, but all this right here, like the best process and the best offer, the best content, this was all taught live in front of a group. It's just me talking on slides and I, I hid the members. So you guys aren't seen, but I'm talking in front of an audience right now. And then after the two minutes, two minutes is up, I stop and I take questions. So all this stuff is taught live. 
So I don't make extra time for it, Karen. I just integrate it into my teaching. I do Facebook lives in my in my private Facebook group. Um, so you're saying to do the same thing in the free school, like do those weekly lives and then it will accumulate into classes that are in there? Yeah, if you're intentional about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this right now, what we're doing today is like, it's not going to be course material. We, we did, this is just like a fun chat Q and a totally random, but let's say next week I do a class on how to hire and train a virtual assistant. I can now put that into the course material on how to hire and train a virtual assistant. So if you, if you're prepared and you have the right theme for it, then yeah, you can integrate it into your courses. without having to make any extra time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause you're just starting um, with the, with the people who begin uh, right from the start and you're creating classes. And then those classes are going to be uploaded into your classroom, just like I do for the paid membership. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Edith, does it cost to set up a free school group? Yeah. It's 99 a month after a 14 day free trial. No, yeah, I can. Happy to review anything for you guys. That's why I exist. So give me a link. In fact, if you guys come to these calls with nothing for me to review, I'm like, damn, missed out. You can always improve by 1% if you get someone to look at something. Cool. Let's take a look. I'll share my screen. So this is Nur's high ticket onboarding process. Send new client questionnaire. Google form. Choose the right result. I'd be more specific. I'd be like, be like, um, in the next 90 days, what would be the ideal dream outcome working together with me? And then give some examples, like IE this or that or blah, 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 blah. Some specifics. Why did you join my program? There's, there's a difference between asking questions for like market research purposes and asking questions to actually help people, right? This question is primarily used for like marketing purposes, but you could angle it so it makes them feel more, um, it actually, actually benefits them more, which would be like saying something like, um, you can get rid of this question actually, because they obviously joined to get this desired end result. Unless you're prepared to do like market research, in which case you'd be like, why did you pick me? You know, but you typically do that on the sales call anyway. Be like, there's a bunch of people who help with this. What makes you want, what makes you want to work with me? He's asking that on the sales call. Have you tried other weight loss programs? You should probably ask that already on the sales call. I don't think you need to ask that. I would get rid of that. Get rid of that. Have, uh, how do you describe your current eating habits? That's such a vague question. I don't know how you want me to answer that. I'd be like, drop down, be like, which of the diet slash lifestyles do you currently adhere to? Standard North American, paleo, vegan, raw vegan, fritarian, breatharian. Are you currently exercising? If so, what are you doing? Again, same thing. I'd be like, describe your current exercise uh, or sorry, which of the follow, uh, or I'd say something like, I'd say something like how many days a week do you perform intense, vigorous exercise? And then how many days, next question, how many days a week do you perform light exercise, i.e. yoga, walking, etc.? You want to make these questions super easy to answer. And then ask yourself, why do you even need to know? Do you, do you need to know? Maybe you don't even need to know that. 
What level of support can we look for? I'd get rid of that. It's just such a hard question to answer unless you're going to give specifics and be like, how many times a week do you want me to call you? Or how many times a week do you want to receive a DM from me? Like these questions are very hard to answer unless you make them simple. Um, is there additional info? Concerning, uh, I'd be like, do you have any current injuries or allergies I should know about? That's a good question. What day times a week are best for? Yeah, so that's it. See, that's a good question right there too. Bam. Cool. Um, yeah, cool. I'd get them to take a before photo too, dude. Like once submitted, go take your before photo. You can't get on the one-on-one -on -one call with me until you send me your before photo. In fact, the link for the one-on-one -on -one call with me is hidden behind a form. And the way to submit the form is to upload your before photo. Okay. So you, so you send them a link for the one-on-one -on -one call, but really it's like a Google form. And the Google form is like, wait, before you one-on-one call with me, submit your before photo. And like, don't have one? Go take one. Get that before photo. Cool. Um, and dude, with every client you onboard, it's you're gonna make little improvements. Always, always, always. Karen, what's your question? Uh, this is something about my products pages on my websites okay um so because i have a number of ebooks that i don't even have yet on a landing page um i have my first website that was from years ago which i still use which is for children and families superhealthychildren.com that has a products page of my first books my first three books and, and the eBooks for those. Um, and those were all based on raising healthy vegan children. Then I also a little bit later, but I've had it for a few years, have my feel fabulous with food website, which has my vegan certification course on it. And also information about my coaching, my private coaching. And so I was thinking to put my current, ebooks on there and my mini course because they're more related to women and and adults you know just like um, raw food recipes and also my happy healthy menopause mini course do you think i should put all my products on one product page on one of those websites or separate them or how would you do it I would ask, do you even need to sell those things? I created them. Yeah, but well, how much money do they generate? Um, realist, realist, on an average basis, like monthly, how much are you making? Yeah, I mean, not that much. When I go out and do talks, that's where I sell them is at live events. Exactly. So if they're not making much money, like, okay, let, let's say, for example, they make a couple hundred bucks a month. And I don't even know if they are. Are they making a couple hundred bucks a month? Um, well, I don't have the new ebooks on a landing page yet. So, so no, they're not making, they're not even making a couple hundred bucks yet, right? No, not yet. Okay. I, I now, haven't put them out there. You've had a few 10 K months and you didn't sell those. They e haven't been with books. Exactly. So those are the distractions. You should just give those away for free as lead magnets. You really? take something that's valuable enough to sell. And then give it away for free. And then you think about this. Let's say you have the best book ever and it's 20 bucks. You maybe on a good year will get 100 people to sign up for that. Maybe. And you make two grand. Congratulations, Karen. You made 100 sales. Okay. <laughs> you get 100 people in. You made two grand. Whoop de doo. Now, what if you gave that $20 book away for free? You'd easily get 1,000 people, right? 
So you went from a hundred to a thousand people. Now from those thousand people, you're generating a thousand conversations. From a thousand conversations, how many sales could you make? How many high ticket sales could you make? Let's say 10. 10 at two grand a pop, there's your 20 grand. We just 10 X your profit by giving away something for free. Okay. But those are, I mean, those aren't just like the kind of freebies. Like I have shorter freebies um, that have like a few recipes in them and they're, you know, less information. The, the eBooks that I made, like, especially the happy, healthy menopause lifestyle mini course, I would sell that for like $70. You saying give that away free too? Well, do the math that I just told you. Let's say you sell a hundred in a year. You make seven grand. You give it away for free. You get a thousand people to opt in. You sell a high ticket program for three grand. You sell 10 of them. You make 30 grand. Mm -hmm. Do you want seven grand or 30 grand? Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. The math is yeah. insanely on your side when you sell a high ticket and you give stuff away for free. This is why I'm all in on the freebie funnel method. I've been, t I've been, Karen, I've been saying the same thing for like four years that you were working with me four years ago. Freebie funnel method. Right. Free, 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 free upsell. Mm -hmm. Can't afford the upsell, no problem, 50 bucks a month. Don't want to do the upsell, no problem, 50 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So just. I don't have them on an upsell. That's why I was going to do just like a landing page. I know you were talking it's a waste about of time. It's a waste of Because for every product, then you have, you got you to gotta do product support. Somebody wants a refund. Somebody can't access the product. You yeah. update the page, you update the page. No, I've dealt with all that. It's yeah. such a pain. That's for every single product. It's such a pain in the ass. Yeah, it is. Every product. That's why we have like, how many products do we have? We, we have business in a weekend and we have content printers. Or anything else? Everything else is free. Like what else am I selling? The bundle, huge pain in the ass, probably never doing a bundle again. And I think the bundle made me a couple grand or something, but it's such, it wasn't not worth a couple grand. I made eight grand talking to you guys today, doing nothing. The bundle I had to haul ass and I maybe made two grand. Yeah. I probably won't be in it again either. So it was a lot of work and a lot a of time. A lot of work for what? It's great for beginners to get their shit together and get a product out there. Sure. But you and I are not beginners. We can make so much more money just focusing on selling the high ticket. And so with the freebies, how would you go about it then? Like um, I have right now the free private Facebook group. Give them my freebies because they're not, that's not really where I'm getting clients is in my free private Facebook group. You have a free school group? I don't have a free school group. I have a paid membership. Okay. What? So you think I should do the same thing you're doing? That with works. And transition people who are really highly interested from it that works. Facebook group into the free school? If I were to re, if I was to start my business from scratch right now, today, and I had nothing, I'd go directly to school. But that's just knowing what I know now. It took Yelena a while to make the jump. It took me a while to make the jump. If you guys still aren't at school, it'll take you a while to make the jump, perhaps. But once you do it, you're like, oh, this is sick. I wish I did it a while ago. So, yeah, yeah. it's just better in every way. Yeah, I like the school platform. I, I mean, I, I like it a lot. Yeah, well, anyways, hopefully that answers your question with the products. I'll just consider giving them away for free. Use them as lead magnets. And um, free up your... Mental real estate, not thinking about selling that stuff. And not even creating a landing page on this site. Just forgetting about that. Okay, that I'm so glad I asked you that question today. So yeah. glad. So why you come on the calls, Karen? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, the Stoic Teacher. You got to change your name, man. I forget your name. I don't like forgetting names, but I can't remember. Sorry, bro. I can't remember your name because it's not even there. Uh, it's Sam. I'm sorry. I'm Sam. sorry. I'm sorry. I'll change it. Um, uh, yeah, I hope you can hear me. I was conscious that it might be noisy. Can you hear me? Yes. There's there's a there's a there's a bit okay. of an ac there's a bit of an accent, but I can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's me. Um, so I just wanted to ask. I've been working through, and I've created a 
I, I just wanted to get your feedback on my funnel. So I've got a free PDF, which um, they get, give me their email on the landing page. And then it takes them to the thank you page where they need to go to the free Facebook group to get the file. So that's been working fine. Um, and then I've been working through, I've also been doing the DM stuff when giving them the PDF. So that's two different paths. Um, I did the three day launch thing over the last two days. And so I've set up my Stripe. And so I was thinking, where's the best place to put the low ticket community? And I was thinking perhaps it should be after they put the email in, before the thank you page, uh, there should be an option to opt in to the found like a founding member. No, perhaps I wouldn't. And then they can I wouldn't buy it. Then I, don't I wouldn't. No, because then you're I getting don't. in the way of people. You then you're putting friction in your pipeline, and you're putting another step in the way of you having a conversation with someone. And conversation should be of utmost priority. So if somebody opts in to get your free thing. The next step should be to have a conversation with you, right? Ideally. Yeah. Yeah. So they're all opting in on on Instagram. So I'm having the conversation immediately before the. Uh, so as soon. Yeah, as but they I mean, I mean, they're good. No, I mean, like within your, within your community, within before. your community, you you want to have a conversation with them within your community, oh. which in your case is a Facebook group. Did you hear me? Yeah. I forget my account. Yeah, I would, but I'd still, I still, I want them in the community because I can nurture them easier in the community than I can nurture them on Instagram. Well, Sam might not have heard me, but everyone else heard me. So do that. Get them in your community. Uh, Sam will be back, I'm sure. Kelly, is there a good platform to host a mini course with a mini quiz for free? Um, yeah. What's the mini quiz though? Well, I used um, Course AI to create just a mini course because I'm just gonna do a new freebie. Just a, I always do eBooks, and I'm like, I want to do something different um, for my ups, for my high ticket program, and so I used Course AI created a really cool course. I'm like, I want to actually turn this into a course. So is, and they have a quiz at the end of it. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's like a little quiz to see if you learned anything in the course. Um, but yeah. Okay. So you could be adding unnecessary complexity to your flow by doing that. Um, I don't know the benefit of a quiz, except unless you were to do a quiz funnel. Quiz funnels work really well as a lead magnet in and of themselves. So you tell people on, let's say you make a post, Kelly, talking about your top three favorite superfoods, right? And then you're like, you say something like, if you want to get your beach body within the next 90 days, take my take my beach body quiz to find out what body type you are to find out which diet program or workout program works best for you. So then they go through this funnel, they answer like, you know, just a few questions on a funnel. I'm a male, I'm a female, I'm above 20, or I'm above 30 years old, I'm below 30 years old. I am above 150 pounds, I'm below 150 pounds. They answer a bunch of like yes or no questions, like this or that questions. And then the final page is like, cool, based on your results, you should get the, you know, bikini body workout guide, or whatever it is. So I would use a quiz only if it's acting as a lead magnet to then get them to buy my thing. But if you want to add it at the end of your program, it's like kind of unnecessary. I don't see the benefit. I don't see the point. Unless you're having like a certification program or something where you're going to certify people if they pass a test. So you think I should just do like an ebook instead, maybe? All the proven framework. All the <laughs> it's easy. Path. It's so much easier. Yeah, in terms of where to host it for free, I I know System has a free funnel. I don't know if they allow free communities. Um, 
Well, I have a problem with system because I do just the like first level of it. I pay for it the first level and I was only, you're only able to do 10 automations. So that's two funnels. Um, and I'm done. I can't use it anymore with any automations. And so I'm like, I was actually trying to do for the plant-based bundle. I wanted to do what you did where you have a landing page. Get yeah. the upsell and I couldn't, couldn't so do it. There. Here's, a, here's a hack. If you create a new account on a system. Okay. Now you get two more funnels for free right now. You have four or you could just create a new account on system. Don't upgrade for the first like seven days or something. Then they send you an email saying, Hey, do you want to get on a monthly plan? Normally 27 bucks a month, but for just 16 bucks a month, then you can pay 16 bucks a month. And then you have like their deluxe package. Okay. So for 16 bucks a month, you can have, I don't know, it's like 50 funnels or something, or maybe it's 10 funnels. I don't know, but it's, it's a lot. I think it's 10 funnels. But it was enough. the automations that I'm having yeah. problems with because it's, yeah, that's the funnels. You can have 10, but it's like, you can only do so many automations. So that's not very many funnels. Yeah. So I think paying 16 bucks a month is the way to go. Cool. Yeah. And then you get access to, you can host your own courses in there and all that stuff. Cool. And it looks good too. Yelena can maybe send you a template for that. Right, Yelena? Yeah. Thumbs up. Cool. Benny in the house. Benny, what's the secret to making a high ticket phone sale? By the way, Benny is one of the best high ticket phone sales in the world. So one of the best high ticket phone salesmen in the world. So if you have any questions about how to sell over the phone, ask this guy. So Benny, what's the secret to making a sale? Understanding the person. It's, it's the steps, right? It's understanding that we're not here to be salesmen and gross and slimy. We're here to understand that they have a problem and give them the perfect solution to the problem and making sure that they understand the gravity of the situation. What happens if they don't do it and they go down this path where they keep continuing the problems they have? And what is the beautiful outcome if they jumped in with us and, and take action and how great things can be? Absolutely. Yeah. I call that the contrast. The more the contrast there is on a call, the easier the sale is. Cool. And then what's the secret to getting someone from a DM onto a discovery call? Jordan Belfer, the straight line theory. You stick to the script, baby. You understand that if you use this script, you're going to get here to here. If you start having random conversations up here, you're going to lose yourself. Just stick to the script. It works. Straight line. Follow the freaking framework. I, when I, I guys, I, I do, I do DM setting too sometimes. Um, when Benny's asleep or something or Sundays or whatever. And I just copy paste shit. I don't type anything. I just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And then, oh, okay, I booked a call. Cool. I'm like, sweet. Just booked a call. So it's like, it's literal copy pasting to get people on a call. And I have this app that allows me to copy stuff and then favorite it. So it's always there. It's like a clipboard. So I don't even need to like go look at a document. I just go click my favorites. I click that, boom, paste it. It's done. So DMing. Very simple copy pasting. And then once you get them on a call, you understand their problem. And sometimes when you understand their problem, you realize that you can't help them. Like this happened with us twice last week. Benny, we got to talk about this, where we actually spoke with two people and it's like, well, we can't even help you. Like your problem is not something we solve. So yeah, you got to understand their problems so that you can even determine if you want to work with them or not, if you can work with them or not. Cool. Uh, Sam, thanks, Benny. Well, I'm so sorry it cut out. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Oh, um, yeah. Where, where, where were we? I thought that um, <laughs> you were saying, no, I shouldn't put the second thing in. Yeah, because you don't want to get in the way of somebody joining your community. So by you adding like an upsell in between somebody oh hey tori thanks for joining us on time uh you don't want to put an upsell in between somebody opting in for your free thing and then joining your group in your case especially not for like a freaking 47 dollars a month community or however much it is yeah maybe if it's okay. like a seven dollar upsell or ten dollar upsell or something minor sure but i would not put i'd not say hey here's this free thing now pay me 50 bucks a month that's wild dude um so where, where do I put that then? Because I just thought that it was, <clears throat> it was because it's people who are interested in losing yeah. weight, stoicism. So the so easiest, the easiest way to sell 
a membership, a $50 month membership. And by the way, this is after I've tested like so many different ways of selling this thing. And what I'm about to share with you are the two easiest ways of selling it. Number one, you have a high ticket program. And if they cannot afford the high ticket program or aren't ready for the high ticket program, you say, hey, no problem. Totally understand. Why don't we just reserve this discounted price for you by you putting down a super tiny deposit? So you put down that $50 a month deposit that holds this rate for you, which because it's the thing that you want. And it gets you instant access to coaching with me, my team, gets all of our resources, gets you rolling. So by the time you do get the cash, by the time that credit card comes in the mail, we'll be, we'll be able to hit the ground running and get your results even faster. So you angle it as a optimization step for them towards the high ticket thing that they really, really want. Never say, okay, can't afford it, no problem. We have this much cheaper thing. It doesn't get you this, 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 or this, but at least it gets you that. Never do that shit. That's one way of selling it really, really well. Works almost every single time. In fact, Benny can probably count on one hand how many times it has not worked. Because when you drop a number from whatever, 5K, whatever your high ticket is, and then go, yeah, you can just put down 50 bucks. That drop, it's it's like, oh, this is the a no-brainer. It's just an absolute mm -hmm. no-brainer. It's always going to work. And it makes mm -hmm. every time you get on a call, a sale. Like Benny's sales rate is probably like 80, 90% now. Every time we get on a strategy call, we're going to make a sale of some sort. I'm seeing sales come in like bam, 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 bam. So that's number one way to sell it. Number two way to sell it is you host a free event. Like you host a workshop, a live event. You say, hey, you make it, you make, you pick a problem that you know everybody's having. Let's say for you, I mean, give me the name, give me the number one problem people are having, Sam, in your community. Uh, they uh, want to, their cra food cravings. I'm just okay. going to open the door. I'm listening. Food cravings. Okay. So. Uh, for food cravings, you got to find out what's the issue with food cravings. Because food cravings in and of themselves, like, whoop de do I crave food. Well, I, I don't mind craving nachos and eating nachos. That's great. What's wrong with that? But you say something like, um, are you still overweight despite wanting to lose weight for the past freaking two years or whatever? Or something like that. Like, have you, are you still struggling to lose weight because of food cravings? If you are, I'm hosting a workshop tonight or tomorrow or Thursday at 5 p.m. that shows you exactly how to completely eliminate food cravings for life so that you can achieve your dream body for life. That workshop is just 75 bucks or it's free mm -hmm. on a seven-day trial of this membership. That's what that's what got me in the group. That was that was the one you did, which which worked. Yeah, it um, always works, bro. It does. It yeah, that's incredibly it. well. So it's currently on a free Facebook community, as you said, in the three day challenge. Given what you said today, have you changed your mind on starting on Facebook for the first 20 people and then switching to school? No, I was talking to, I was talking to Thomas about this earlier. I don't know if you're yeah. here. I said, Facebook's a great way to get going. Okay. Or you got started on Facebook. I got started on Facebook. Thomas is going to start on Facebook. Karen's on Facebook. We get started on there to see if like that's the kind of route that we want to go. It's kind of like a free rental car. Mm. like do you really want to drive in the city here's a free rental car rip it around okay. after a few weeks you're like, yeah, I, I want to drive in the city but this rental car sucks I want to drive a freaking Tesla okay cool now you upgrade okay cool yeah thanks Ted yeah you're welcome cool Tori has a question that's why she showed up promptly But she's frozen now, so too bad. And now she's off. Okay. Um, who else? Anyone? Stuart's been awfully quiet, man. Stuart, I'm, I'm concerned, man. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't asked any questions. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still working on it. I signed up uh, a few people in the last month, uh, two hundred bucks a month. 200 uh, bucks a month yeah how'd you do that uh i'm helping them build businesses so uh but i still needs work i mean i had the first guy was due to uh renew a couple of days ago and he seems to have dropped off the face of the earth so maybe i need to do some more work but I, i'll get there 
what uh, you say you help people build businesses. That's lawn mowing business, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, so I just, yeah, just help them with their branding, uh, help them with their marketing. Uh, have you yeah. gone through the 27 P's? Yeah. Getting there. <laughs> Make it yeah. top freaking priority. All you guys do not come on the next call unless you got the 27 P's dialed in. I promise it's going to make you more money. If you, if you guys are wondering how to make more money, how to make more money, how to make more money, just fill the 27 P's. You'll make more money. You will make more money if you fill those out. Yes. Cool. Uh, who hasn't asked any questions yet today? Adina. Dear Adina. Sorry, I was traveling. I didn't. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't have any, I'm going through. I actually wrote my 27 P's on the on a plane on a napkin. So <laughs> I'm almost done with them. I have a um, uh, definitely it was a lot of clarity with that. I was like, whoa, like I I, I didn't I, I couldn't articulate anything before, like just going through the 20. Oh, man, <laughs> it changed everything. So um, I don't really have any any questions right now. Um about that but I, I mean i got a beta client that i'm going to be working with i have i'm going to be posting on instagram so i know i'm going to get a lot of people asking but um i have a really good client right now that um we're going to be testing out my program and stuff cool. with it so sweet yeah good work going through the peas juniper how about you hey i'm um, getting back here just plugging away and um, definitely going to focus on the 27 P's for sure. That's priority one. Cool. Um, so focus in, I think I I'm getting ahead of myself because I offered to get um, beta clients and then I didn't do anything with them. And so I'm like, not on that good record. So um, I get to go save face at some point. And so I'm, I'm really hopeful um, Myro and like all the little technical stuff um, the one that I'm struggling with, like the one that does the messaging and such. So putting all these pieces together and it's, it seems like a lot. So, um, getting back to focus one thing at a time. So priorities, uh, the 27 P's I think is where I, I need to focus first. I think, uh, what I would do, I would go find another beta client and then book that for like few days from now and then in between now and the beta client work on your 27 piece you here's here's a massive secret by the way to getting a lot of stuff done is you always got to have publicly announced deadlines and accountability deadlines so that something actually is happening if i wake up and i got like no deadlines or nothing to do i don't really get much done but if i'm like oh i have a meeting with so and so at this time and this needs to be done before then i have to get it done so always like put like constantly throw stuff forward and then move towards it, throw stuff forward, move towards it, throw stuff forward, move towards it. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, for sure. Cause uh yeah, that's where where it's at. Thank you. You're welcome. That I, I want to jump on that. There's a reason I put my my meetings at 8 a.m. Because if I have meetings at 8 a.m., I know I gotta, I know I gotta wake up. If you have nothing to do at eight, then you're going to sleep in. But if you know you got to have something done, you're going to have it done. Yeah, that makes sense. But I appreciate that because I know when I partner with people that are in Europe, for example, in, in past um, situations, I know I get that commitment. I'm like, yeah, 7 a.m. OK, fine. It's like a good time for them. I'm like, OK, I'm committed to being up at 7 a.m. So thank you for that. Cool. Mm, Tori, last one. We're all waiting for you. Sorry, my laptop overheated again. It was in the freezer. My bad. Question. <laughs> so I don't have a question. Did you want to hear something from me? Yes. Okay. Um, I feel like I am on a roll, getting high tickets, having a great time. I usually don't put things out there but I've hit a new 
PR for monthly income, which feels great. <laughs> so thank you, Ted. Heck yeah. Amazing. Way to go. What do you think contributed to that PR? Give us one thing externally that contributed to it and one thing internally that contributed to it. Um, externally, I have been doing very consistent call to actions with like comment, comment for free, whatever. That's the easiest way that conversations are happening. I don't really use stories that much. So I put it in posts. Um, and then internally, I have sold my last three high tickets to people who have been in my network and like, they've been very nurtured by me over the last couple months. So I pretty much skipped any discovery call with my team stuff. And I was like, okay, get on a call with me like right now. So then, you know, it was just a direct to me. It's huh. great. Yeah. If you're only doing those who want what posts in posts and you're getting results with them, that's amazing. I would get you to try at least one who wants what CTA things in a story, at least once a week. Cause we pretty much only do story ones and we get just so many. How many views does the story of yours get? Not, not a lot. It's you actually. Story... What, how many story, how many views do you get? 500 to a thousand? Yeah. Like a thousand, 1200 maybe. Okay. So we get the same amount and we get a shoot load of DMs oh. from those. Okay. The thousand people in a room. I know. I feel you. I feel you. My reels oh. just do more. I'll just do both. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, you might, it, here, here, here's something I'm realizing too. This is a huge takeaway. This is, this is my takeaway last week. I've applied it all week long. I'm definitely going to apply it moving forward. <clears throat> if something is worth posting, it's worth posting everywhere. If you're going to post something as a Facebook update, you might as well post it as an Instagram story. You might as well post it as an Instagram caption. You might as well send it out as an email. You might as well put it in your community. If it's worth posting, it's worth posting everywhere. So you should also take those CTAs you're doing, Tori, that, that are working well and sending them out as an email, like a broadcast. Now, of course, you have to customize them slightly. So if instead you said normally you say comment below, when you send out an email, you say email back. Email back with the word yes or whatever. Or some, sometimes I don't want people to comment below. So I say, send me a DM with the word help. Yeah, I would. And by the way, how do you know when, when to do DM versus comment below? I say DM the word help instead of comment below with the word help on places where I don't feel like I'm going to get a lot of comments. I don't want the comment section to be dead when I say comment below. So I say, send me a DM. But yeah, if it's worth posting somewhere, it's worth posting everywhere. You can even make YouTube, <coughs> you can even make YouTube uh, updates now, social updates, like posts, like tweets. How do you find it to be doing like CTAs within school? Oh, incredible. And then you direct DM from that? It's ridiculous how good they are. We posted this same thing on Facebook. Uh, we got five comments and one like. On school, we got 80 and 16. Mm. Even if Benny commented on half of them, it's still 40. <laughs> we got five on Facebook. It's incredible. Benny hasn't even got tellies and we still got 80. I'm, I, does a thumb up mean you DM'd him, Benny? Yeah, I got him. Oh, cool. I, I, dude, there were so many comments. I had to tap out at one point and just start <laughs> messaging people. No, but you know what's good about commenting too every now and then is that it bumps it to the top. Yeah. And you guys want to know a little trick on school, what you can do is you can go like this. It bumps it to the top, right? Oops. You can delete it right away. And then you just delete it. And it's now back to the top. 
and there's no evidence that you bumped it. <laughs> it even gets rid of your name here. So now it's at the top. Don't do that in my community though, or I'll find out. I've done that in the school community a couple of times though. I'll go in the school community, I'll just like bump a post, I'll put something that I'll delete my name and boom, I'm at the top. <laughs> Yeah. So yes, Tori, to answer your question, it works incredibly well. Don't do what this guy does, by the way. Uh, I'm in so many freaking groups. I'm like studying them all, seeing what works well, what doesn't work well. I was tempted to message this guy and be like, bro, you don't need to do this. He just posts. He treats it like a blog, but now it's like, this isn't really a community. It's just like a feed of his stuff. Just he's the owner. But it's just too much. He does like one or two per day. So, yeah, don't just like one every now and then is fine. Here's, here's a question. I've been contemplating this and it's kind of related to what you just posted. What do you think about taking content like short form content and putting it into free resources in your school group and having like all of your 15 to 30 to one minute? As long as it's helpful. Okay. As long as it's helpful. I was thinking of creating a whole course with one minute videos lessons. But then I'm like, nah, then I'm like encouraging ADHD ness and you can't sit and listen for like at least three minutes. You got issues, man. Um, uh, but yeah, no, as long as they're helpful. That works. I'm th I'm doing this as well soon. Uh, probably the next week is we're gonna create you should do this too if you're in school. We're going to create a classroom. One of the things will be called testimonials and we're going to put all of our testimonials right here. Bam. Oh, the person's name with the result right beside it. Bam, bam, bam. And the video there. And then we'll have a little description of their story here. So we already did this on Facebook. So it'll be very easy for us to copy paste. But if you go to our guides, um, you can see this, for example. So, boom, there's a video of them plus a little write-up. So it tells a story. Now, again, if it's worth posting here, it's worth posting where? Everywhere. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to put this on Instagram. I'm going to put it on email. I'm going to put an email sequence even. And here's a, here's a tip with email. If it's worth sending out as an email broadcast, I wish someone told me this years ago. If it's worth sending out as an email broadcast, it's worth adding to an email sequence. So every person in the future gets it. If you don't add it to the email sequence, then was it really that important to broadcast? No. So it's like, if, it's good, if you're going to broadcast it, you're broadcasting because it's really important. The only thing you wouldn't add to an email sequence, obviously, is if it's like, hey, this Thursday I'm going live with Nerd to talk about his new microphone. Like, that's obvious. But everything else. Ed, why that. would you make a new module for your testimonials? Why wouldn't you just add it under your upgrade module? Right under I want your... people to have a dedicated it's a decent question. I want people to go here though and see. <laughs> well, we might not call it testimonials, you might call it like success stories or something. And I want it to be like a dedicated place to click here. It's like bam, they're all there. Because no one's gonna know that like resources has or upgrade has testimonials. Um, they're not going to know that <clears throat> we could, add, we could add a couple or something, but I want you, a dedicated spot. You could just add a link to say for testimonials in the upgrade, yeah. just click here. Yeah. For success stories, click here. Success stories, by the way, is a much more attractive word than testimonials. Testimonials feels paid. Success stories feels very genuine. In case studies sound boring. Sounds like I got to study something. We want, we like success and we like stories, success story. Cool. All right. Um, also, Tori, I know you're running system funnels. You should try this. Oops. Um, on your, so people opt in to get your free thing, right? Ignore this. You opt in to get your free thing. And then on your thank you page. I I checked your thank you page the other day and I realized there's a there's room for improvement on your redirect page. So your redirect page should say something like this. Your stuff has been sent to you, it'll be there in 10 minutes. 
But if you'd rather not wait, get it all instantly in the community here. You'll get way more people joining your free community if you say this. I'll put it in the chat there and copy paste. Take me there now. Boom. Because, yeah, I checked out your thank you page and it was, um, it was a lot of stuff going on. It wasn't that direct and simple. Cool. Okay. I'll see y'all's late. Bye for meow. Have a great Catterday. And I'll see you in school. Ciao, y'all. Peace. Bye, Thanks, Edith. Ted. Bye, Karen. Bye, Thank Edith. you, Bye, Ted. Bye, Stuart. Bye, Nur. Benny. Good work. Thanks, Ted. Cheers. Peace, peace. Bye. Actually, Bye. Benny, I'm going to call you. Ciao.